This is Lights Out. I am Fessel Khan and I'm delighted to be joined by Horny, Harvey Horn. Thanks for having me, mate. Cheers, mate. No problem. Pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Um, well done on the win tonight. Thank is that you. Six Thank and you. Oh, seven and seven oh. and oh, nah. seven, seven and oh. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Very Thank you. good performance. Full eight rounds under your belt. That's probably the most important stage of a fighter's career. Getting rounds as many as possible in the early stages of your career. How do you think you're progress progressing going further on in towards your career? 100% there, hit the head now on the head. It's all right blowing them out in the first, second rounds, but you need to get them rounds behind your belt. Mm -hmm. And that was eight good solid rounds in the bank for me. Um, decent work rate, couple of little things to work on, but um, all in good prep for the next one, which is hopefully hopefully a 10 rounder. So yeah. I'm creeping up them steps, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hitting the steps and now, so I'm knocking on the door. How are you finding it, um, going up from four rounds to six rounds to eight rounds and then potentially ten rounds before the year's out? It's all in your head, mate. I used to think, oh, how am I going to do four from amateur? Oh, mm -hmm. and then when I got in the WSB, how am I going to do five? Oh, how am I going to do eight? Like, yeah. little, little doubts creep in. But it's all in your head, though. It's all in your head. Once you're in there, fight's a fight. Doesn't mm -hmm. I, I, I breezed it, really. I felt like I, I had more in the tank and I feel like the ten, will, the, the longer rounds suit me because I'm a, think of, I'm a thinking fighter. It gives me more time to work them out. Once I do work them out, there's no getting back. There's no going back from them. So. Mm. Uh, you boxed up, um, in Steve Nidge a few months ago on the Billy Joe Saunders Shafat a Sufi card. Now you box at your call. That's two big, you know, venues. I mean, we all know your call is considered the mecca of boxing to many people from UK boxing. You know, what are these? Um, what are these? Uh, you know, these expectations that you've got. What are these ex experiences like for yourself? Boxing oh, at these venues. They're brilliant. Sometimes you do have to sit back and think, oh, like, you, you do have to sit back and take it in. It's very easy to get caught up in it all. All of a sudden, uh, before you know, I've boxed in Manchester Arena, I've boxed in your court a couple of times, boxed in the old 2 Arena. If you don't sit back and have a look, sometimes it's just like, you, you've got to enjoy it. And yeah. I mean, your court, I enjoy your court because it's like my backyard. You see, I have a good crowd with me all the time. I'm an East End boy originally, so. Um, I, I just uh, I love boxing the court, love it. Mark Mark Tibbs has worked wonders with Dillian White, and of course he's doing the same with you. You know, talk to us about that relationship you and Mark have got, especially when he works with a fighter such as Dillian White. Brilliant. I mean, having people like Dillian White around the camp is great for me. Anyway, it gives me it gives me something to look look mm -hmm. up to, and um, we got a good good solid camp of us. And Mark's done wonders with me. He's turned me into um, a long rangey uh, amateur boxer who could only score points. To, I've turned into a bit of a vicious, vicious pro now. I'm turned, um, I can box. I'm learning to fight a lot better. Um, before a couple of years ago, I would never have thought about sitting in the pocket. Now I sit in the pocket comfortably. I let the body shots go. It's just turning me into an all-round professional and um, mm -hmm. done wonders with me. And wonders yeah. You're climbing up in the rankings. I believe you're going to go to uh, seventh in the UK right now. Looking at what's next for you, are you perhaps got your eye on maybe the southern area, the English? Do you want to rule that British outright in the next few fights? Definitely, definitely. I think hopefully, um, don't want to jinx nothing, but the next fight should be a title fight. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, I'm not too sure what one yet, but definitely a title on the line. So I know I've got a 10 round coming up. Yeah. Uh, can't say too much because I don't know too much. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> You're in the same division as Kalyafai, Ryan Farage, you know, Sonny Edwards who's a few pounds higher than you, I believe it is. When are you going to be, I know obviously you can't think too far ahead, but when are you going to be looking at them type of fights thinking that these are the fights I want, I want to move on to that stage? I'll be happy to have one 10 round, I'll pick up maybe a title, maybe a little title, WBO European, anything mm -hmm. like that. And then yeah. once I've had that 10 round, then I know, once I've got that 10 round behind my belt, I'm comfortable getting in with these fighters mm -hmm. because I know that, like the likes of like, see, like, see, Sonny, see like Jay Harris, people like that, they've had a good couple of 10 rounders, even like Jay Harris has had a 12 under his belt. I need them rounds under me belt and I feel like I could once I've had the 10 I'm ready to jump in with them, yeah. Think, yeah. Just one final question, I know you work closely with Dinya White. Um his whole situation of not getting a world title fight, you know. What what's your thoughts on that, you know? How unfair do you think it's been to Dinya whether, White? Whether I was his gym mate or not, it's ridiculous. He's been the mandatory for what? Is it over 600 days, something yeah. like that. Never he's he's beat everyone put in front of him since the Joshua fight. Mark's done wonders. He's, he's a world operator. You can see he's a world class operator now. And um, it's bang out of all done. I would say that whether he's my gym mate or not, because he, he deserves his shot. Mm -hmm. Whether he wins it or not is a different story, but he deserves a shot. And 
yeah, I think that like, the, even the things with the recent like the drug thing that's come out, that's not actually come out. Like it's it's just ridiculous. They're, just, out they're just treating him unfairly. I don't know what it is, but I feel like he is being he's he's been handled unfairly. And um, I think they, they know once he gets his shot, I think he's going to take it with both hands. Like he, Dillian's a, he is a quality fighter, so mm. I'm looking forward to when he does get his shot. I'm gonna. I'm sorry, I know I said last question. But I'm going to ask you the last no question way, now. Mate. A fight I would love to see is Dillian White versus Tyson Fury. Many reasons behind that because the press conference would be entertaining as ever. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. What would your predictions be if Tyson Fury and Dillian White got it on? Hey, I've got to back, I've got to back my gym mate, Dillian White. Tyson, don't get me wrong, Tyson Fury is quality fighter. Sorry, Jim. Um, Tyson Fury is quality fighter. I think um, he should be well, he should be the champion of the world, so it's heavyweight champion of the world. But. I've got, I've got Dillian White's got, got a lot in the bank, mate. I reckon, I reckon it would be very, very interesting. Like you said, the press conference itself would be, mm. be brilliant. You can just see it now, then being oh, pulled apart the way. Going, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Costumes a lot, wouldn't it? One calling yeah. one a bum, yes. the other one calling another one a docile. Yeah. Good publicity, definitely. Be a great fight. Be a yeah. great fight. And he deserves it. Dillian One hundred percent. Okay, well, Harvey, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations you on the win. Uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, we look forward to speaking to you next, next time. Thanks for having me, mate. Horny Harvey Horn, thank you very much for talking to Lights Out.